Luis. Hello. Hello. Welcome to my show. So <laughs> we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna start immediately by asking you a quick introduction, essentially who you are and what you do, and then we get into a bit more questions about your specific practice. Mm -hmm. Can you just start by telling us who you are? So I'm Louise Moles and I practice a psychological training program called the Thrive Program. I live here in Cambridge and I, I enjoy my time here and uh, having a business and um, uh, learning to thrive. Fantastic. Okay, so you are a Thrive Practitioner, uh, we, uh, which uh, I have some knowledge of it, yes. uh, but um, many people out there will not have a knowledge of it. So can you describe it in a few words? We will get into more, more details later on, but if, just as a, as a very succinct introduction to the yeah. Thrive Program, please. So the Thrive Program is a psychological training program yes. to help people who want to learn how to thrive in life so we can all think about somebody that we know who is positive who looks after themselves who's able to feel good about themselves and gets the most out of life that's somebody who's thriving and yes. all of that can be taught in a skill set okay. in a program called the thrive program which says what, yeah. <laughs> what, <laughs> what you need to know <laughs> excellent Okay, so can I ask how long uh, you've been doing, uh, you've been offering this, um, I, can't, I can't even call it a therapy, it's more of a, it's a, of uh, a training, training course. Yes, okay. A wellness so. course. Okay. Um, uh, I've been in practice um, four years. Oh. Wow. Um, I think about then, so just thinking about when I finished my training to become a consultant. Yes. And, um, and then I, when I set up, I, I came to Salat and... Um, I remember that, and, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so started practicing and seeing clients. So yeah, after the point I finished my training is about four, four years ago. Great. Okay. So can we just go through how did you get into uh, the TRI program in the first place? Mm -hmm. So I was a client first and foremost. Okay. I wasn't thriving. So um, the person that I was about before pre-thrive five years ago or so it was completely different I wasn't thriving I didn't know how to keep myself happy I didn't feel good about myself um, and I, I knew that I could do something about it so I found um, I was recommended uh, Rob Kelly who was the creator of the yes. program and I went to see him as a client and completely changed my life and thought this is a fantastic way for people to take control of their own mental health and more people need to know about it so I then trained to become a consultant and that is where I am now is practicing fantastic so you've been you've been training you've been trained or you've been treated first and then trained by Rob Kelly directly yeah yeah and it was very clear even during my sessions as a client with him yeah that I wanted to do something like that so I, prior to that I had no previous psychology training mm. an interest in it but but no previous training um and so i it just made sense to me very quickly and i just remember thinking what a fantastic job that would be and so it not only gave me the opportunity to thrive in my life but also yes. it's a business opportunity it was a career change for me as well fantastic yeah, that's a life changing, yeah, a life changing in ways, encounter. In all ways, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Great, great, great. And can I ask, what did you do before? Um, I was working in charities and education roles. Mm. So I'd always had employed uh, uh, full time, full time work. Yeah. And then um, the Thrive program and and training to be a consultant has given me the opportunity to run to run a business to be self employed. Great. Okay, and uh, so did you have, uh, was your past experience leading into this one? Was there any relationship between you working as a full-time employee in charities then becoming a Thrive Programme in um, private practice? Not really. Okay. If, if anything, the, being a client was the biggest turning point for me. So I'd, I, I wasn't, I knew I wasn't happy 
previously mm. in my other jobs. I enjoyed my roles, but I just felt like I wasn't getting out of it what I wanted. Okay. And at that point, I didn't know how. So it wasn't until I actually learned to thrive myself and became a client and turned that side of my life around and developed myself personally, then that gave me more opportunities to um, look for career opportunities and think about what I wanted to do and be a bit more ambitious. So um, I was interested in people. Um, I liked um, helping, but other than that, it was a, a, a different kind of turnaround, I guess, a different kind of path to take. Fascinating. Uh, so you became, you followed the Thrive program, you started thriving personally, you realized you had the potential to actually do it yourself. Yes, yeah, yeah, because the change, the personal development change was so profound Yes. that I then started to allow myself to consider that I could do something different and I didn't just have to work in places that perhaps I wasn't as happy or I didn't feel comfortable, I wasn't pushing myself, so setting up practice was a big challenge but mm. I was prepared at that point to push myself in that way great okay this is uh, it's always amazing to hear <laughs> these stories yeah. because you know because it's a life changing yeah. think about how many people out there are doing a job just uh -huh. because they need money yeah. and they just uh, sit in a desk or yeah. they are standing in a uh -huh. factory or in a shop doing a job and uh, basically counting the minute they walk into it, into the job at 9 o'clock yeah. in the morning and they're literally counting down in the hope that it's going to finish soon rather than having yeah. a happy yeah. happy business or happy life yeah. in their work. It's fundamental that you feel good about yourself first. And yes. That's, that's the skill I didn't have. So that was the change for me. That was something I didn't even give myself any credit for and hmm. once that changed everything else did as well click yeah. it all clicked <laughs> yeah it did <laughs> okay now a question that comes naturally is uh, was there one person that had most influence in your development well in <coughs> terms of um, I don't feel like I would be in the position I am today had I have not been recommended to be a client for the Thrive Programme so I would have to credit Rob Kelly of course for making and creating something and developing something that I can now be a part of so um, yes his influence is definitely fundamental for me being where I am and um, the organisation is very very supportive of its consultants as well so I don't feel like I'm working in isolation mm. I have I've, you know, I've met lots of new people I've made lots of new friends as part of that journey, yeah. um, but I wouldn't. It wouldn't have happened had he not have created something that was fundamental for me. Sounds very nice. Yeah, <laughs> there'll be lots of other people thanking him as well. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, sure I'm sure. Okay. Do you remember in your development as a practitioner one mistake that was more painful than another? <laughs> was there a particular mistake you say, okay, I could have avoided that, but. I think at the beginning when I was setting up, I found it very hard to ask for help. I mm. kind of just, because I didn't have the business skills mm. and I'm still learning, you know, hands up, I will admit that. Um, <coughs> I, I probably just jumped in and mm. loved it and was excited about every part of it and sort of forgot along the way that I can't do it all on my own yeah. and I do need some help and I do need some guidance. So more of a process change, mm -hmm. I guess, rather than one big thing. But it has cost me by not asking for help. Mm. So um, that's something I'm learning to do. And uh, it's more comfortable to do that now. Great. Okay. If you could go back in the past, as none of us can, so it's yeah. always a rhetorical <laughs> question. <clears throat> Is there anything you would change in your past after what you just said? I, I guess the answer will be one, yeah. but um, <laughs> I'm yeah. interested to hear what I you say. I think um, uh, learning, there's, there's so much amazing advice I've been given. There's so much um, <clears throat> um, information and um, I think 
learning to ask for help, knowing I can't do it by myself, um, but also putting into practice the right advice and seeking support from the people who do the same thing as me. So yeah. and all of that has come, but just eventually, you know, I had to look for it and maybe it wasn't, there was a bit of a delay because maybe yeah. it wasn't. Um, so I was too excited. I wasn't asking for help. I was just going for it. Um, yeah. Great. <clears throat> okay. Um, was there a key point when you decided that becoming a full-time practitioner, a full-time therapist was the way to go? Um, I think when I was completing my training, yes, um, I was thinking about the transition to mm. becoming full-time. Yeah. And I was in a position where I'd I had some money which always helps to kind of set help me set up practice yeah and so there that was that was the turning point is being sensible while still excited of course <laughs> but just um yes there what there was a point where I thought this this needs to happen now you know I want to I want to start seeing clients and if anything that's where the journey then really began so the training you know is is great and brilliant and wonderful but I really started learning so much more when I was seeing clients yeah so that's that's where I wanted to get to that was always the goal is to um, set up practice and 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 see clients all the time so basically you started to see some clients once you saw some clients you said this is really what I want to do yes right. yeah, absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah and so um, a lot of my client base was um, coming from younger and younger people, mm. parents asking for help for their children. Yeah. And so uh, more recently I've started working with a much younger client base mm. because of that. So that wasn't something that I predicted where mm. I would necessarily have younger clients. I thought I had an idea about who might come, what sort of person might come to see yeah. me most. And so therefore I um, was doing other work and other training as well as seeing clients to help me work with children and get a bit more experience and knowledge with, with a younger client base. Great. Okay. Could you just explain in a few words, um, first, how your therapy work, then the next question will be more about a sing how a, si a session, a single session is developed. So in a few words, if you had to explain to me, because I might be interested in getting this, this mm -hmm. uh, program, could you just explain? Um, well, the biggest lesson that I have learned as a client is that mental health and well-being is not something that you just have. It's something that you do. So um, that attitude, that skill set can be taught within the Thrive Programme. Okay. So the course is um, relatively short compared to other therapies and treatments. Sure. So it's a, it's a course, it's a training programme. Um, you commit to a period of about six to eight weeks and during that time we would have sessions where you would be learning all the skills that you need in order to build strong psychological foundations and thrive in your life. Okay. A session is 90 minutes long? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there are six or eight sessions, 90 minutes long. Uh, I guess each session is... Same or different? Each session is different. So the program is tailored for the client. Right. So, you know, an eight-year-old needing help at school with stress or something like that would be a slightly different session format to, uh, say, a 50-year-old suffering with something called emetophobia. Mm. Um, so um, depending on the client, the sessions are very much tailored to them and their needs. Yeah. But the learning process is the same. The goal is the same. The um, the things that they change are the same. The the foundations that they build are the same. Great. Okay. Um, you already mentioned a few times. So is there a typical client? Because you mentioned younger people. You mentioned mm -hmm. people in their 50s. So is it a broad range of uh, ages, I guess? Uh, 
yes, I work mainly with emetophobia clients. So emetophobia is a fear of being sick. Okay. Um, and there are many, many sufferers of emetophobia. So I, I would see many emetophobia clients. Um, most of them are young as well. So below the age of about 30. Um, and then um, uh, many children inquiries as well. So young children who are at school, maybe teenagers are slightly below. Mm. Um, parents might be concerned for their children and they would um, be able to work through the teen version of the, the Thrive programme. So there's a different course tailored to different age groups. But I would say mainly I'm seeing younger clients and um, uh, emetophobes um, around about the age of 30 or below. Okay, great. Um, it seems uh, obvious to me, but I'll ask the question. So what is the typical outcome of a person finishing the Thrive program? Yeah, <laughs> so um, being able to completely change your life around, really getting yourself thriving, which, which means something different to every person, but mm. ultimately it's about building strong psychological foundation mm -hmm. so that person a thriving person feels good about themselves um, isn't socially challenged mm -hmm. um, overcomes anxiety <coughs> um, so it might be that somebody has particular symptoms that they want to overcome yeah. and when you learn to thrive those symptoms are just no longer compatible with that kind of attitude and that kind of um, thriving mindset so it's really about um, a life change, something that you do, it's not something that you just have, it's a practical application. Great. However, I guess for different people, thriving in life has a very difficult connotation. For some people it can be very materialistic, it could be something achieving results that they couldn't believe. For others it might be yeah. purely spiritual and feeling super happy all the time with a big smile on their face and yeah the the uh depending what people um want to do with it so the same skill set is you know you learn the same skill set for every client sure it's what you want to do with that 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 counts and is going to make the difference so if you have a particular symptom that's very very impactful um, on your life, something like emetophobia, mm. then the results are going to be seemingly more um, profound than perhaps somebody who might just want to boost their self-esteem a little bit. Yeah. Um, but either way, the process is the same. Yes. And um, everyone can learn how to thrive. It's an accessible course. Yes. So... What I, I understood by speaking to other people as well, just to, to rephrase it a bit, is that um, so you have six or eight modules, each of them will affect in different ways one aspect of your life. So if somebody, yeah. you know, there, there are different, many different ways. And obviously the result is somebody for thriving. So is there a kind of, a, of an assessment at the beginning of what the person wants to achieve beforehand so that you say okay how are you going to measure yeah. try for yourself being tried is that the yes. way you work yeah yes there's there's a there's a very comprehensive assessment process at the beginning okay. um, which is um an online assessment okay. so anybody that starts the program will need to complete that and that will give us everything we need to know between us between me myself and sure. the client everything they need to know in order to to get themselves thriving so that forms the um, the information that we need it we it's it's measurable because we know exactly what we need to change and where we need to change it which of course as you say might be different from one client to the next of course yeah obviously yeah. as you said it's tailored to the person so and then we revisit that assessment at the end of the course as well so mm. it's it's something that you can see results in a very short space of time relatively short space yeah well yeah six weeks is nothing for somebody yeah. who might have been struggling for many years yeah. in their life yeah. yes yeah. okay can i ask what is your relationship out of this it sounds like you've been going through uh, the training and then working and then uh, adapting to clients what is your relationship with patients um i 
would say that people come to me because I am warm and welcoming. Mm-hmm. Um, my knowledge and understanding of the program is very good and I, I feel that, that comes across so yes. the first time I meet somebody it's very likely that they will go ahead with the program so I'm confident that I can um, build a good relationship quickly with the, the people that I see mm-hmm. okay what is your relationship with consistency <laughs> <laughs> um, Well, within the program, it's very important that the clients are consistent. Okay. So I would need, you know, there are times when I would need to be firm and make sure that they're on track. Um, and that's something that I've learnt to build upon because it's really important for managing expectations, making sure that they're getting the most out of the program and putting the right amount of effort into it. Um, so... Uh, my consistency is is that they need to be consistent i guess it's kind of a cyclical thing okay that yeah absolutely um and uh, how what is your relationship with adaptability and quick changing of direction in terms of like in, as developing your business you've been working on developing this business how important is uh, this um Being adaptable, I think, is very important, flexible, because the program itself is always changing. So mm. we look at evidence-based practices. Um, yes. We, um, the organisation puts a lot of work into changing the program when it needs to be changed and updating it. Mm-hmm. So my practice changes alongside that. I do need to keep up to date with everything. So I think that's important to be adaptable since i've started practicing there's been many changes mm. and m- all of them amazing um and it makes it helps me to deliver a better course a better program for the client yeah um so i think that i have needed to be adaptable and i have coped with that and i have managed it very well and stayed on track and still excited about it so still know what i want to yeah i want to carry on okay Now, talking about yourself in your in your life, uh, um, applied to your business, obviously, is there any daily or weekly routine that you follow? Uh, yes, um, thriving, which means um, keeping myself happy, keeping myself, um, being kind to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so having your self-esteem um, kept high mm-hmm. and knowing how and when to boost it. I think high self-esteem is the best coping skill you can have. So that's important. If mm-hmm. I'm not um, managing my thinking, then everything else around me doesn't work quite so well. So do you do specific exercise or...? or... Yes, yeah. So uh, Thrive Program exercises. Okay, so there are specific exercises <laughs> yes. which you carry on for the rest of your life, basically. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, but, it, but if you practice them enough, consistently in that you know six to eight week period then um, it becomes a habit so it's not something that it's it's not just about resilience just having to kind of pick myself up every day yeah it's about being consistent and being psychologically well and once you practice that enough to the point where it becomes a habit it just takes a little tweak every day and that's enough to, to keep going and keep thriving great okay so build up habits Yeah. Okay. Do you have any particular morning routine in what you do from when you wake up when you wake up in the morning until you do the first hour of work or whatever? Um I think again it would be just keeping keeping my thinking in check and knowing um if something is starting to become problematic. So if you know yourself really well mm. and you understand the way that you think yeah. and you know what's helpful and you know what's not helpful. Yes then you can always stay on track. You can easily guide yourself. Adaptability so I, yeah, and change I, the direction. I yes. rely on me. <laughs> Great. Um, do you do any kind of... Uh, this is not in the questions, it's just mm-hmm. a simple... Do you do any kind of uh, mindfulness exercise or meditation? Um, I do... I practice yoga right. um, weekly, so that sure. wouldn't be a, a, a daily thing. Um, but I've found that's very helpful for... Um, 
well-being and just time to relax sometimes yeah. it's not relaxing sometimes it's challenging um but but that's what i enjoy yeah With, which led to the next question yeah. <laughs> if you exercise and uh, how often so yeah. you you do yoga once a week yeah and i like walking and um uh, challenging myself more in terms of um exercise so climbing and those kinds of things oh wow okay that's interesting Okay, now talking about your private practice, your your Thrive program practice, where do you see yourself in three years' time? Um, shouldn't start with an arm, should it? <laughs> um, where do I see myself in three years' time? I still definitely will be practicing the Thrive program. Okay. I can't see that not being a part of my life. Okay. Um, and um, seeing more clients, seeing more people, helping more people, um, helping people to understand that they can take control of their mental wellness and it's not something that's out of their hands. Um, so again, just carrying on as I am and building, building my practice, asking for help. How about that? <laughs> asking for more help and yes. building a, a bigger, bigger client base. Yeah, it's great. Now. If you could help, if you could give someone who is interested in starting in private practice, whether within the Thrive program mm -hmm. or, or any other private practice, what would be your advice? Go for it. <laughs> I have I have recommended clients to clients of mine to to train as consultants. So a few right. of them have been interested in that um, because they were in the same position that I was and realised right. that it was profound for them and they wanted to do more with it yeah um so um yeah recommending um the training to people is 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 has been definitely a conversation that i've had um outside of the thrive program then yeah because it gives you the opportunity to be self-employed mm -hmm. um to be independent yes um and um even with someone like myself with yeah. no prior business training mm. i've managed to do it so you can you pick up the skills you learn you ask for help and you'll get there you adapt yeah, you adapt. <laughs> change adapt. direction exactly. yeah. check what works yeah yes it is quite common i've noticed uh, a lot of people become uh, become therapists of some kind in mm -hmm. private practice after having tried um, so I've seen massage therapists that after receiving lots of massage they decided to do yeah. that so yeah. it's a pretty common or very often people have life-changing experience like yourself. You know, yeah. you, you are in a situation, one particular uh, program or training or, yeah. or, or therapy helps you to change. And then you say, okay, if change me, I can change other people, yeah. I can do it. And some people decide to go for that career. Yeah. It's quite common. So yeah. it's fascinating to see this kind of evolution. Yeah. Louise, this has been a very interesting conversation. Thank you very much for your for your answers. You. And I hope uh, it's going to help uh, other people out there maybe to decide to become Thrive Program, yeah. <laughs> Thrive Program Consultants <laughs> or, or to come and maybe see you because yeah. they get interested in, uh, in exploring that possibility for themselves. So yeah. thank you very yeah. much. And um, all the best for your future. Thank you very much.